Hello everyone and today we'll be going over how to paint and install these unpainted front fender scoops for the S550 Mustang to look like these beautiful nice little upgrades for this Twister Orange 2021 Mustang. And the first thing we're going to do is open the car door so we can locate the paint color code on the sticker within the door jam. So we're going to zoom right in and you can see where it says EXT external paint. For this one it is CA. So that's the paint code we're going to have to use to order our new paint. So we're going to go type in AutomotiveTouchUp.com. Scroll down. We're going to type in the year, which is 2021 Ford Mustang. Search. And we're going to scroll down until we find Twister Orange. Uh, nope, wrong one. And there we are, Twister Orange. And we're looking to confirm CA. There it is. So we're going to click on CA. Scroll down to the bottom. Continue with our order. And we just need one can of this because scoops don't take that much paint. And that's what we want, a nice 12 ounce bottle. And we're gonna go down and pick our clear coat. We got a nice 2K clear coat. And this is a urethane clear coat, which is really good stuff. Add to cart. And then all you have to do is fill out the rest of these items and then you can go ahead and have your paint shipped to your home. And the items we'll be using today, our respirator, our safety glasses, our gloves, sandpaper, painter's tape, a plastic drop cloth, these are disposable, that's a nine by 12, scissors. We're gonna be using a sponge some rubbing alcohol, microfiber cloth, our soap and water solution, water, our tack cloth, and this is where we have our adhesion promoter, sandable primer, base coat color, our 2K clear coat, and then we also have our ultimate compound by Meguiar's and our ultimate polish by Meguiar's. All right, so let's jump in and get started. All right, so we're gonna start by putting on our safety glasses and putting on our gloves. There we go. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna scuff up the scoop surface. So we're gonna take our soapy water solution, spray it all over the scoops themselves, and feel free to put a generous amount. It's never gonna hurt to put too much. And then we're gonna take our sandpaper, this is 1000 grit, our sponge, and we're gonna wrap the sandpaper around our sponge. That way it gives us a nice flat and distributed surface. And then we're gonna go ahead and start sanding, or wet sanding, the scoop surface. The whole idea is to remove all that gloss surface and scuff it up. That way, when we paint it with our adhesive promoter and our primer, it will stick to the scoop. With the surface nice and scuffed up, we can go ahead and clean off all the soap and all the dust from that scoop. So just take your water and clean it completely off until you see no more soap. Then go ahead and grab your microfiber cloth just so we can accelerate the drying process. All we're going to do is wipe away all the water and we're going to sit the scoops out in the sun a little bit just so it can dry off faster. And those look pretty good. I like how that looks. Now let's go ahead and clean the scoops with some alcohol in our microfiber cloth. So go ahead and put a little bit on there just to remove any soap or grease, anything we have left over on the scoops themselves so we can have a nice surface to paint to. And we're gonna go ahead and let these dry out in the sun. So let's prep our paint area. We're gonna use our drop cloth and some painter's tape. And we're gonna make a simple booth. And that didn't come out looking too shabby. So we're gonna go over a little bit of our process today. We're gonna to apply our adhesive promoter, our sandable primer, our base color, which is our Twister Orange, and then we're gonna apply a couple of coats of clear coat to protect our paint. So like any paint job out there, we gotta start on the prep work. So we're gonna take our tack cloth right here, and we're gonna wipe down the surface to remove any dust, debris, fingerprints, anything that's on the scoop that shouldn't be there. This will nice give us a dust-free surface so we can start our adhesive promoter. And that came out looking pretty good. So let's start with our adhesive promoter. The adhesive promoter is great for plastics. It helps paint and primer stick to plastics. So we'll start giving it a little shake and you wanna shake for two minutes. That'll ensure all the chemicals are mixed thoroughly within the can. All right, now we're ready to have some fun. So every now and then you're gonna see me take a cloth and wipe off the tip so that way nothing builds up on the nozzle. So I'm gonna start spraying before the part and continue after the part. And I wanna go with the contour of the scoop itself. You always wanna stay perpendicular and contour to the part you're painting. 
So that's one spray or one coat. And we're gonna do the same thing and do one coat on this one as well. And then we'll push our part under the isolation booth and close the cover. And after 10 minutes have passed, we're gonna go ahead and apply our second coat, but this time we're gonna go the opposite direction. We're gonna go up and down instead of left to right. And then we'll go ahead and push them right under the isolation booth and close the cover. And they look pretty good. So far, nothing touching them, no dust or debris on them. After 20 minutes have passed, now we can go ahead and apply our sandable primer. And we're gonna use the same techniques. Go ahead and shake for two minutes. Make sure everything's mixed up nice and good within those cans. And I'm gonna do a little test spray on the cardboard just to make sure it's not spotty. Yep, looks pretty good. And again, I'm gonna start up and down. And I'm gonna start before the part and keep going until you go after the part. Do not spray on the part. Always spray before and continue on after. And now every now and then you're gonna see me wipe the nozzle and continue the same process. Once both parts have been primed, we're gonna close the cover and wait 15 minutes. Now it's time to apply our second coat. So let's go ahead and go left to right instead of up and down. And wipe the nozzle every now and then just to keep anything from sticking to the spray tip. And we're gonna continue the same process all over again for the second coat. Once both of them are complete, wait another 15 minutes. Now we're ready for our third and final coat. We're going to the opposite direction one last time and continuously wiping the nozzle until both parts are primed. And after 30 minutes, the primer has dried. Now when we touch it, you can see it's got a little bit of dust on there. That's a little bit of that primer dust that's left behind. That's completely normal. So let's go ahead and take our scoops off our sanding boxes and go ahead and put it on a new piece of clean cardboard so we can go ahead and wet sand it. Go ahead and grab your 600 grit sandpaper and then we'll go ahead and grab your sponge, wrap it around your sponge. And of course, we're gonna grab our soapy water and drench everything in soapy water and go ahead and give this a nice wet sand. You don't have to go too deep. We're just gonna remove all that dust and get this a nice smooth surface. And when we've completed wet sanding, go ahead and rinse off all the soap using your water and microfiber cloth to dry. At this point, it'd probably be a good idea to switch out my gloves. And we'll go ahead and prep our cleaning surface. So go ahead and put our fender scoops down, grab our isopropyl alcohol, microfiber cloth, and we're gonna clean off these scoops once again to make sure there's no oil, debris, or soap left behind. So we'll get those nice and clean. And just as a little bit of overkill, we'll go ahead and use our tack cloth once again and make sure there's not any fine dust or anything left behind for our next paint process. And it looks like we're about at a halfway point. So let's go ahead and grab our base coat. This is this twister orange color that we have. And we're gonna go ahead and shake this up for two minutes and make sure everything shook up nice and good within the can. Then we'll go ahead and let me move that a little bit. And we'll go ahead and start our spray process before and then in after the part. Same thing we did with the primer and the promoter. Wipe the nozzle and keep the same steps. And we're gonna put a little bit of a light coat on the first go around and make sure we get all the sides. And then we'll push that part up, bring the second part down and do the same thing for the second part. We'll go ahead and put the cover down, wait 15 minutes. The paint should be a little bit tacky right now, but that's perfect. Clean your spray tip off and go the opposite direction when you paint. So we're gonna go left to right this time, and this second coat's just gonna be a tad bit heavier, and we're gonna do the same thing on both parts. All right, wait our 15 minutes, and then we're gonna apply our third and final coat. This time we're gonna go up and down instead of left to right. All right, and after 30 minutes have passed, grab your tack cloth, and we're gonna wipe down the surface right before the clear coat. This will make sure there's no dust on the surface between the base coat and the clear coat. All right, so go ahead and grab your 2K clear coat. We're gonna shake for two minutes, make sure everything's mixed up nice and well. Take the red cap off the top, and we're gonna put it on the button that's on the bottom of the can. So press it right on there, and you need a nice strong surface, and press down really hard until you hear that snap. That's exactly what you want. And now the two chemicals within the can are gonna to start to mix, so go ahead and shake your can for an additional two minutes. And now we're ready to apply our clear coat. Please make sure you have a respirator and safety glasses for this step. It's very important you have a respirator for this one because this stuff is very toxic. So we'll stop by wiping the nozzle and then going to go ahead left to right when spraying our part. Again, we're gonna use the same technique as we did with all the other parts. But this one, we gonna start with a very, very light coat of clear coat on the first go around. And after 15 minutes have passed, we're ready for our second coat. 
and we're going to go ahead and put a little bit heavier on the coat on the second go around. So we're going to go up and down instead of left and right and do this for both parts. And we're going to allow 15 minutes to pass and do a third coat. We're going to wait an additional 15 minutes and do our fourth and final coat. And then once we apply all the clear coats, we're going to wait 24 hours. So we're going to take a good look. They feel pretty good. But if you look at it in certain lighting, you can know a little bit of bumps in there. It's going to look like something like an orange or an orange peel. And that's what we have. We have a little bit of orange peel. And this is kind of expected based on the way I was clear coating. Because there are certain angles I was not perpendicular to the part. But no worries. We can go ahead and take care of that. Grab your 1200 grit sandpaper, sponge. And we're going to wet sand our scoop and get rid of that orange peel. So by using a very fine sandpaper and soapy water, we could sand down the surface to make this look like a glass finish. And that's the whole idea for this process. Go ahead and wash it down with our water. We're going to remove all the soap and dry it off. And with the part dry, you can take a look at your work. You still see a few shiny areas right here and a little bit up top. So we just need to sand that down until we get this nice dull look. You see the left here? That's exactly what we want. So we'll go ahead and continue the same process again and go ahead and remove those shiny areas and wet sand them down. Now we can go ahead and step up our sandpaper to a 1500 grit sandpaper. And the whole idea is we want to take the scratches we already put in the surface and make them even finer. The finer the scratch, the better. It makes it easier on the buffing process. Now we're ready for the buffing process. So grab your Meguiar's Ultimate Compound, microfiber cloth. I'm going to apply a nice generous amount to our microfiber cloth. That looks pretty good. Now let's see if I can get a nice little bit on here. Just like this. And we're going to start swirling it in a circle. The whole idea is we're going to start buffing out all those scratches we put on the surface to give it a shine again. So this is going to take a while, and it's going to take a lot of elbow grease. And after we have done this for about five minutes, take your clean microfiber cloth and go ahead and wipe off all that compound. Do a quick inspection. So you can see a little bit of a shine coming back. That's exactly what we're looking for. So the more shine you have, the better. So we're going to continue the same process again until this thing looks brand new. And there you go, you're starting to see a lot better reflection and a lot of that orange peel is gone. That looks pretty good. That's not too shabby at all. And now we've finished using the Meguiar's compound. Go ahead and grab the polish. Go ahead and apply a nice generous amount to your microfiber cloth. I'm going to dab a nice bit of it on the scoop, just like so. And we're going to do the same process of swirling it in there. We're going to go ahead and buff out all that compound we have in there. The whole idea is this is a finer polish. It's going to make this shine even more than the compound would. And then go ahead and take your clean microfiber cloth and go ahead and wipe it all off until you have a nice, beautiful shine. And taking a look at our final paint product. Eh, it looks pretty good. A lot of orange peel is gone. That's exactly what we look for. Nice and smooth. Beautiful. All right, so let's take a nice, quick inspection of our part here. Paint looks pretty good. It's exactly what we look for. Let's grab our insert, and we're going to test fit the insert. So far, it looks like it snaps in pretty good. Yeah, it fits pretty nicely. You always want to test fit it before you apply the double sticky tape. And, yep, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to set that aside. So grab your isopropyl alcohol, and then go ahead and grab your microfiber cloth, and go ahead and apply some microfiber cloth, and we're going to clean the surface of the scoop here. And make sure you have something soft the scoop is sitting on. So I use the packing it came with, so that way we don't scratch it up. And with both scoops oil-free, go ahead and grab your double-sided tape. This is the 3M double sticky tape, the thick one. And we're going to apply a nice hefty amount here to this insert. So I'm going to grab it and see if I can get my nails under it. There we go. And we're going to start with one of the edges. Start from the top, or in this case, bottom, depending on how you're holding it. We're going to go all the way down until it's nice and straight. There we go. Have your scissors on hand. And have a nice little trim off to the end there and make sure it does not overhang. Perfect. And do the same thing again. We want to add a second strip, but this one's going to be more towards the other leading edge. There we go. And, yep, at the very end, give a nice cut. Perfect. And I do like to do a nice little trim, make sure it's perfect on the ends. I'm meticulous. All right, rub it down. Then I'm going to flip it to this end, and I want to go ahead and 
put it on the edges of this end as well. This does take a little bit of work. You have to be a little bit meticulous. And nice little cut right there. And same thing on the other end. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we can go ahead and attach the fender vent insert. So now that we did our test fit, and this helps if you have nails. If you don't, you're just going to take an hour like I did. Peel off all the red lining. And 10 days later, there we go. And I'm going to start from the very top. So you're going to see that I have the very top in the exact spot we want it. I'm going to hold it with my left hand. There we go. And then I'm going to bring the bottom down using my other hand. I'm going to close it like a sandwich. Perfect. And it kind of clamped together, so it worked out. It clipped together. Then we're going to hold this together for about a minute and make sure to press it in until it feels nice and firm. This is starting to look like a pretty good part. All right, let's go ahead and clean it one more time. You can never have too clean of a part. Grab your microfiber cloth, and we're going to clean the inside of this again. Every time I touch a surface with my hands, you're putting oil on the surface. So the whole idea is we're just cleaning it all off. And once the alcohol dries, Go ahead and grab your double-sided tape once again, and we're going to go along the edges of our scoop. Now this part does take a second, so take your time. And I'm going to start with this edge, and then continue the rest on all the edges of the scoop. Press down on the double-sided tape just to make sure it adheres to the part. And with the power editing, we completed both parts, and they look pretty good. All right, grab your isopropyl alcohol and your microfiber cloth, and let's go ahead and clean the surface of the fender itself. This is what the scoop is going to be sticking to, so we want to make sure this surface is nice and pretty. All right, now with the surface clean, grab your scoop. And it looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and see if we can put it on the car exactly where we want it. We want it just about right there. It helps have a second hand. That's what we grabbed for this one. And have someone to hold it really helps. Grab your painter's tape. And we're going to use the painter's tape to support the fender scoop to the fender. So I'll show you how we do this. So I'm going to take one strip, like so. And we're going to put it against the top of the scoop and the fender. And I'm going to push nice and firm. I want to make this one with each other. I want these to be perfect so it does not move. So you can see even the crease at the top of the scoop on the fender. That's exactly what I want. That looks good. And with it like that, you fold the scoop up, and it's going to act as a hinge. And let's move the camera up so we can see what we're doing. All right, once you lift the scoop up, go ahead and remove the tape liner. Again, this really helps if you have nails. It takes me a second, obviously. And there's the long one, and it's the last one. There we go. After two years later, bring the camera down just a little bit. Very nice. Now all we have to do is install the fender scoop. So all you have to do is bring it down. Go very slow. Do not touch the tape. You only got one shot at this. And there you go. And it should go back in the same place you had earlier. And all you have to do is press it very firmly against the fender. So that's all we're doing right here. We're going to press down and make sure all the tape adheres to the fender. And it looks like we remove our painter's tape. It looks very nice. That looks very, very nice. And it contours the wheel well very nicely. I love it. Of course, we're going to repeat the same steps for the passenger side. And 
hopefully you found this video entertaining. If you did, please like and subscribe. Oh, that's funny.